Hi, um, so this is basically a fork upgrade on a Royal Enfield Interceptor for example. Uh, but this is very basic is uh, once you take the forks off, you remove the cap, easier done when you have the motorcycle, obviously when the forks are on the, <coughs> on, the on, on the bike, because it's easier to remove the cap, the poles, remove the wheels, take the, take the forks off each one tube at a time. Uh, once you do undo this, you've usually got, uh, in this case it's fairly simple, you've got uh, a spring and a spacer. In some, in some folks you'll probably see a cartridge, damping rod, etc. But let's assume that this is what we're working with. We're going with the YSS uh, fork upgrade kit that gives you uh, better springs, uh, valves, uh, different spacer and uh, the end cap that comes with the preload adjuster. So you can probably see on this that what comes stock in the motorcycle is uh, without any kind of adjustment possibility but this gives you just basic adjustment capability. So once you take it off, you've uh, taken the spring off so as you can see there's nothing inside this, right, all the oil has been drained. Well, more or less. It's all the gunk from the previous, uh, you know, obviously when it came stock on the motorcycle. So you pretty much pump this a few times, you get all of the oil out. And when you're ready to go, uh, you've got, you invert this. We're using here liquid only 10 weight. Uh, basically the, the W or the weight uh, represents different kinds of viscosity. So you've got five weight, I think there's 2.5 available, there's 10, 15 and 20. So obviously the higher the weight, the more viscous it is, I mean less viscous it is, uh, and the lighter it is, it's more viscous. So for example, a motorcycle that, uh, for example, a race motorcycle, you obviously want oil to flow much better, in which case you want to run with a lower lower uh, weight rating. So in most of these street applications, 10 weights kind of what works. Uh, you don't want to go too heavy, although, you know, people say, okay, 20 weight, I should, I don't want it to, I don't want it to be so squishy. But a 20 weight also makes it much more heavier in terms of how it handles, the flow is less and the 10 weight is sort of a good compromise if you're looking at uh, you know, road capability and a fairly decent sort of handling. Uh, unless you want to, you know, obviously trying to go much faster then you might want to look at a uh, slightly lower weight. The lower weight actually gives you a better viscosity and helps flow through uh, all of the systems including the valves and, the, and especially the valves which makes it a lot more flowing than, than, than a heavy weight. Anyway, so now we've got this. So what we're going to do now is very simple. Most uh, manuals, most people in India, I think, you know, we tend to sort of look at the quantity of oil, but my theory is that we look at air gap. Air gap is the amount of air that's measured after you pour in the oil, but without any other uh, installments in the, in the fork. So for example, the springs, the cartridge, you take them all out and then you pour the oil in and measure what's called the air gap. So the way we do this is I use a vernier and a syringe and uh, uh, basically this tool is available. Uh, I mean, of course this is from abroad, but basically you can, have, you can use this and you set your air gap. So, so for example, uh, on this particular motorcycle, we have an air gap of 150 air gap. So if I have an air gap of 150, what I want to do is I want to set a measuring stick at 150, right? So I've got 150. I'm going to put this in. This allows me to syringe out any excess fluid. So fork oil, let's assume, you know, if I look at it from outside, I want to pour oil obviously anywhere above this line. So if when I pour oil above this line uh, and I can suck it out. So now you might ask the question, why air gap? Air gap gives you a lot more consistency because one, I can actually measure the quantity, measure the air gap as opposed to the oil. If I measure oil and I pour, let's say it says 480 ml. Now I take a measuring cup, depending on whose hand it is, I might be pouring 460, 470, I might even pour excess, some of it might spill out. Um, so you're sort of approximating it and you're hoping that you can do a best job. But this gives you a very accurate reading of both the forks being at the same air gap level. And so if you pour more or less, it doesn't matter. What you want to do is just measure air gap. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, <clears throat> We're just going to pour enough oil. I think the fork here says about 80, I think. Let's assume I pour quite a bit. We'll pump the uh, inner and the outer tubes to get the air out of the system because there's obviously air in the system as you pour the oil and there are finer holes inside that the valve, the oil has to flow through. So once we finish pumping this, I'm going to measure the air gap, right? So I don't know if you can see this, but there's fuel, there's probably liquid up to here somewhere. So we we know we've pumped this and I'm just going to put this in, we're going to hold it level and I'm going to suck the, the, the fluid out until I get to the right gap.
So I've got that much out. I might have to repeat this maybe once or twice. Obviously, it's fresh fluid, so it can go back in the in the can that you took it out of. This. As you can see, it's more or less out. Just to reconfirm, I'm gonna put this back in. And just double check. So I'm not getting any more pull. And which pretty much means that what we did with both the forks, they're sitting at about one, they're sitting at 150 mm of uh, air gap. Once the air gap's done, um, obviously what we want to do now in the case of the YSS suspension, which seems to be a really good upgrade, a little spacer. Uh, this is the valve that allows the damping. You can see the holes in this. Uh, you can adjust this. It comes preset uh, for most, most of us. And so we want to obviously drop this in. This is the first thing that goes in. So what we'll do here is to just keep it from spinning around is uh, we just apply a few dabs of grease uh, to, to make sure it doesn't sort of slip out of its slot and we drop this in, right? Once that's in, we've got, we know we have to put the spring in. This is the new spring from YSS. We drop that in. It'll sort of naturally obviously find its way down. Uh, we put in the washer. You can see it from here. The washers, you know, it's not like you can invert it or you need to worry about the direction. I've got the spacer. And lastly, I've got uh, the cap, the fork cap, which allows me uh, the adjustment that I mentioned. So now here we go. We've got this in. And turn it. And you can tighten this up either obviously once it's on the bike much easier because you've got something holding the fork. So that's pretty much it, it's fairly simple. When you have a cartridge kit, it gets a little bit more complicated, but for the most part, that's kind of what you would do. The most important takeaway is the, in this is the uh, air gap and the kind of oil you use, and make sure you work in a clean environment. Having tools um, which, which allow you to measure air gap obviously makes it a lot more precise than just trying to approximate something that's using volume. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. Uh,